Hey pals. pals, welcome to another episode of the Plot Pals Podcast. Welcome to a very angry episode about the men who are fuming and women who are also fuming. In this episode, <laughs> we're going to talk about 12 angry dancing princesses. 12 men with the smell of violent death in their nostrils. What's the matter with you guys? <laughs> they are, they're so emotional, these guys. So I, I think dancing princess is a good That's way to describe good, them. Yeah. They're I upset. So. I mean, these men, they're screaming at each other. They're not even listening, mm. literally. I don't understand you people. I mean, all these picky little points you keep bringing up, they don't mean nothing. One versus everyone. Mm -hmm. One versus 11. I'm just saying it's possible. <laughs> And I say it's not possible. Story all about justice, injustice, truth, mm -hmm. lies, about saying that you know things when really you don't. Right. I, I'd like one man changing the world as well. One person actually had the power to save that guy's life. That's right. He could have just not done anything. Or think about it this way. These 12 people that didn't even care had the decision or like power over that person's life mm. you know they're know. just some random people one of them is a baseball like a baseball fan he just wants to get out of there to get to his yeah baseball exactly game. and these people get to decide if somebody's gonna live or not they decide for someone's life mm. wow but it's kind of amazing that everyone has to agree that's a good rule yeah imagine if Democracy. there were like yeah 90 percent of you have to agree but if you don't all agree it's okay mm -hmm. But everyone has to be on the same decision. That's kind of cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was kind of like surprised at the fact that even though 11 people voted mm -hmm. guilty and one person only voted not guilty, everybody listened. And well, yeah, they weren't listening, but still they were willing to change their opinion. Mm -hmm. I thought that the vote would be like final or something. I know if it was, I feel like in a regular place, yeah. somebody would say, I have a different opinion. They would just say, okay, well, we don't really care about you. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. we, we're gonna shun you from society. <laughs> but this was cooler because they actually got to talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about this amazing film. I, yes. I think it's number five on the greatest films of all time. Um, really? Super well-deserved. Who said that? It's, well, somebody, it is on somebody. my list. <laughs> wow, it's special. one of my favorites now. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be honest with you, when I heard the name of the movie, I was like wondering, and like the poster, as you can see, 12 people. I was like, how are they going to show us a story of 12 people? Like, how? Mm -hmm. Each of them are going to have a screen time, and that's going to be like the whole movie. How are they going to put a story together? Like, exactly. every scene you're going to follow, and then you have to learn their names and everything. Mm -hmm. That would be so hard. And it was only one hour and 30 minutes. So how is that going to happen? How are they going to pull it off? Exactly. Surprise. They just have a table and a scene like that. Like, it's just one place, one mm -hmm. location. And you don't even get to know their names, really. It's just that. Yeah, you don't get to know their names at all. Only yeah. the main character. At the very last minute, he says his name. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And I was so surprised. And I love the simplicity of it. Like, you can make a film that couldn't be this huge. So Sidney Lumet, who directed this, his life is insane. Well, since he was a child, he was an actor on Broadway. Really? So actually, like a successful actor from like, I don't know, the age of seven, I want to say, until he went to the war. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if he went to the war, but he enlisted in the army. So this is like so on. First or the second? Mm. Or the third? I want to say the second. Okay. But I don't know if he was actually in the war, though. Oh. I think he just went to the army or something. But like, how, how often does this happen? That he was a successful actor and then he decides to go to the army. Yeah. Why don't you just stay and act? And then he comes back and he realizes acting is not for him. So he decides to become a director instead. Ooh. He was already a successful actor. And then he becomes a director and this is his first film. No. <laughs> this, no is, way. this is so crazy to me. Wow. But like you imagine he was already a successful actor. Yes. And then he was working apparently as an assistant director, which is awesome for some time. And I want to say like he made maybe some TV movies or something. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, like this was the first time he made a feature film. Wow. wow. And it's a masterpiece, straight up. How is that even possible? I know. Like some people are just so talented. But but he always says himself, like, you just have to keep making works and don't even judge the work. Don't say it's good or bad. Yeah. Just count as a, as experience. I see. That's really good advice, yes. It is, it mm -hmm. is. And also the writer of this as well, Reginald Rose, uh, he, he was, I think, uh, a jury himself at one point. Oh, and that's right. why the mm -hmm. experience. 
That makes sense. Yes, exactly. Because it is very realistic. Like you gotta mm-hmm. be in that situation to know. And then the plot is so amazing. Like, okay, I'll tell you. This is the logline: twelve men who are sitting together through a jury discussion mm-hmm. change their votes from eleven guilty. One not guilty, two, twelve not guilty in the span of an hour. You know, so now you're just oh like, well, God. how does that happen? You know, I want to watch this hour to see how each of these people change their mind up. So I would imagine he wrote this first and now he's like, okay, how do I achieve this? How do I actually make twelve people change their mind? And then he comes up it with the whole story. It feels like he actually had twelve people and like said, "This is like what's gonna happen." Just argue about These are the facts. It. It's so surprising that the whole movie takes place in one room. Exactly. This never happens. Like, have you ever seen a movie that does no. this? No. Maybe one in a million. Maybe it happens like a short film or something. Yeah, exactly. And it's not even that good. I know. <laughs> Meanwhile, like a five-minute short film, you're watching that, you're so bored, and this is right. an hour and a half in one room, and you're so enticed the whole time. And as you say, twelve characters like how difficult it is to actually compose these shots. Yeah. Uh, like you just imagine when there's three people, it's it's scary. Mm-hmm. Because when it's two people, okay, you sh- I point the camera to you, then I point it to me. Oh my God, a third person comes in, what do we do now? Like two people have to be in one shot, one alone. Exactly. And then this is 12 for an hour and a half. It keeps changing around, like the way they walk around the table, mm-hmm. going to the bathroom or something. So amazing how they plan no. this. Just their camera work. Oh my God, chef's kiss. I know. <laughs> I loved it so much. Like it just cut. It doesn't even cut. Yeah, it doesn't. No, it doesn't cut that much. That's the thing. Yeah. Like uh, the first scene, like the mm. first part of it, when they all come, I actually was like, okay, you said 12 people. I'm going to count mm. if it's actually true. And then sure enough, like one person mm. comes in two, three, four, five, six, mm-hmm. until 12. A dozen people come in. And then the camera is like goes from one person to another. Mm. The levels were mind blowing for me. So you follow one character, they sit on a table or they sit on the chair and then you follow somebody else that they were talking to. And that person goes and sits beside somebody mm-hmm. else. And maybe the person beside them is like standing or like, it's I know. just so beautiful. Ah, the it's, planning is crazy. Exactly, the choreography and all mm-hmm. that. And it seems natural too, mm-hmm. because like, you know, even we tried to like make some films and it was just one shot. Yeah. And we had to like plan out the whole thing. Like, how are we going to choreograph it? At what time should we be where when we say exactly. that dialogue? And that was just one shot that we made this movie. We had one exactly. shot and we're sweating like, OK, <laughs> we should go back and come forward. And right, right, right. And they, they do this for like 300 and 60 shots, something like that. Exactly, and it just follows everybody around. You Mm. get introduced to everyone, one by one, and you get like their key characteristics. If you watch it like the second time, Mm. you actually get to know so much more. Like you realize you get to actually see the main character much more. And you see, oh, from the beginning, he's just standing in front of the window, very quiet, reserved. He is a composed guy. He's in control of himself. Mm-hmm. And the other guys that are a little bit more maybe prejudiced or a little bit more like fiery, they're in the first scenes, like in the first time, like they show themselves by being mm-hmm. uncontrollable and like going I know, they look so uncomfortable. Like, yeah, they keep walking around. They're just blowing their nose and they don't want to yeah. be there checking the watch. And that guy that like, wants to go to the baseball game oh yeah, my god right. that was so disgusting the guy is like has this <laughs> handkerchief in his hands and is just <laughs> sweating yeah. and yeah. everywhere he puts it on his mouth oh, and god. all his like neck and everything mm-hmm. it was just but you <laughs> see like their key characteristics mm-hmm. and each of them are so different so that's good writing that's exactly the fact that you de- don't even learn their names yeah. but you can distinguish them Okay, there's the baseball guy. There's the guy who grew up in the slums. The guy who's super composed and he's always like, oh, he's guilty. You know, I believe he's guilty because of these reasons. Like, he has his reasons. The guy who has a son who's like estranged from his son. The guy who's a racist. You know, like, it's so clear. I can't believe they make you remember all the characters. I know. And the fact is, like, if there was, like, a jury, actually, they're so realistic that it feels like these people are real. If there was a jury and this was the case, mm. th- this would be how it would play out. I, I know. Like. <laughs> it's so realistic how they judge the person who says not guilty. Yes. Like, everyone turns around like, what are you, some kind of mm. idiot? Like, what are you thinking? And all the time, they're just like, who do you think you are? Like, the things that they would say to each other, I just thought, if I was in the room, 
Yeah. Either I would start crying Ooh. or like I would like not talk to anyone. Like you know, just you imagine they insult each other so much, mm -hmm. and they just say like you're worth nothing. Shut the hell up. And this, these people like still compose themselves and give their argument. Right. They are like they actually are really angry. It's yes. really well named, and and they they're also like really good at fighting for it themselves. Actually, I kind of disagreed. I was like at the end of the movie, I was like not all of them were angry. But then you realize that anger doesn't always have to be a loud voice and, you know, just stomping your foot down like that. Mm. Uh, it could be just as composed as number eight guy, you know, mm. the main character. But that's the thing, like, they don't even have names in the script. Yeah. It's just like juror eight speaks, juror five speaks. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, for example, the one that I really liked that was so balanced after, like, the main character was uh, the one that was, like, the manager of them, kind of like I the judge love of that them. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The one that is sitting here, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, here. Yeah. <laughs> Th this guy, like, he was also one of the jurors, but mm -hmm. for some reason they put him as the leader, uh -huh. and he has to uh, actually work through these 12 angry people. Eleven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's he's not angry. So so he has to like make sure everyone is in the room before they start right. and keep order yes. and like go get knives. And finally, he gets fed up, which I love. Yeah. That's so realistic. He's like, okay, well, why don't you do this job mm -hmm. if you really think mm -hmm. you could? Yeah. And, you know, it also shows courage. How do you stand up to this amount of people? Like, I know for a fact, like, imagine even a classroom. You have a different idea mm -hmm. of the teacher and everybody else in the classroom. It's so hard to voice it out. You have to be so sure of yourself. And even if you're sure, you don't want that, uh, that spotlight on you. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. This is a hundred percent true, and and so you just see if some you can't fight for yourself. It's so hard. Mm -hmm. You can't fight for the truth. Yes. You just listen to whatever somebody else says because that's easier. And it's not even the thing like it just happens in the moment. Mm. You know, you just agree blindly. I don't know. You're just not mm -hmm. there. They say something and you agree I know. just because you don't want to talk to them. But then something fatal happens to you. Exactly. <laughs> or they decide something really important for you. Mm -hmm. So oh, I get it. I totally this happens do get every it. day, all the time. And then you imagine twelve people. Mm. Like I actually felt the pain. Yeah. Of even the next person. So there's already one person who said not guilty, and then a second person says not guilty. Everyone is like, what are you? doing mm -hmm. you just change your mind like that like are you a uh, nobody nothing good for nothing you know yeah. and you just think how are you supposed to voice your opinion if this is how you're gonna get treated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. every time and the thing is like given those evidences we probably would have thought that the boy is guilty too. exactly uh the thing is like and this guy stands on this word, reasonable doubt. Mm. He says that over and over again. Uh, there is reasonable doubt, and as long as there is reasonable doubt, there's room for this guy to not be guilty mm. and for us to be wrong. Uh, the thing is, like, some people were so prejudiced, like they just wanted to be right. Like their exactly. ego was so involved in that mm. that it felt like an offense to them if they lost. It just didn't, at some point, didn't even involve the boy mm -hmm. or the fact that he was guilty or not. It was a matter of their honor and, like, their ego. Mm -hmm. That's, like, the... People. This is so true. And so many times in the movie, I was reminded of something that you say, you've said a lot of times oh. in the podcast, which is that you should act like you don't know anything or you should mm -hmm. believe that you don't know. Right. But meanwhile, these 11 people, they, they really thought that they know the facts. They understand yes. what's going on. They, this is like black and white. He's clearly, a, he was a bad guy from the beginning, this boy. Mm -hmm. He will never get anywhere. So because they believe that they know, yes. they actually end up making such a drastic mistake of almost killing him. Meanwhile, the other guy, number eight, Henry Fonda, he, he's always saying, I don't know. He yeah. literally says this. He's like, I don't know if he's guilty or not. But exactly, let's talk about it. Exactly, exactly. Even, uh, even though, like, till the end, that he proved everybody wrong, mm. and he was kept, like, he kept going, and I was sure that yes, he is not guilty. Still, he would say that I don't know. These are mm. just doubts. Mm -hmm. I I'm not even sure. Like, exactly. I think even till the end, that was the case. Mm. I was kind of looking forward to see like what happened after this, like. 
did the boy like actually become not guilty or guilty or mm. what happened well, to the court? Well, I assume he would become not guilty if yeah, this decision was made. That's right. true. But like, I wanted to actually be proven, right? Mm. Like the boy maybe talks to the guy or someone, mm. but we didn't even get it. Like it's like a ha- cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. You're not even supposed to, you should have the doubt. But with mm-hmm. the doubts, you must believe in something. Mm-hmm. Like, believing comes from the doubts. If you knew for a fact that something is true, Mm -hmm. that's not even believing or belief at all. Right. And even, I would argue that you don't even need belief. Like, you you shouldn't put your identity into, oh, I believe he's not guilty. Mm -hmm. I like how, as you say, until the end, they're always saying there is reasonable doubt now. So why would we kill this guy? Yes. Like, he might have done it still, but does he deserve to die? Mm Because he might not have. So... I like this idea of them always bringing this up, like how smart of them, to yeah. how smart of the writer and also these characters to, to not say he is guilty, he is not guilty. They just said, let's yeah. discuss, which never happens even in real life. Like when we live on a daily basis, yes. we're always saying, I know these things. Like I know mm. this person is being mean to me right now. So like probably uh, they, they have this bad intent. Yes. Instead of just saying, you know, I don't know. I don't know what, why this person is talking to me that way. Exactly. And, and like the whole movie, these people really thought, oh, the number eight ha- really has it in for me. Like he, he's mm-hmm. calling me stupid. Whereas like, let's say the Henry Fonda guy, he just wanted to talk. Yeah. So I, I think this is what I, I realized after watching this movie. Like you've really got to go through life. Uh, and you already said this a million times, but like go through life saying, I don't know the answer to things instead of just assuming. That's so true, yes. You know, not being attached, just as I said, like these people, some of them that were attached to this thing that they said earlier, to their word, they were they yeah, really exactly. like lost because when they were proven wrong, it felt like they lost their identity. They lost themselves as they were going. Whereas this guy, even if somebody said something to him, he didn't lose anything. He didn't lose himself. Mm. He didn't lose his control. He was just so composed. Like, I feel like that should be our goal. That's mm. like the kind of person that we have to become. Mm-hmm. Just so detached from everything. But always right. standing for the truth. Like trying mm. to find the truth along the way. Yeah, he's so, his character is so awesome. Like even at the beginning, he wasn't yeah. talking to anyone. Yes. You know, yes. like what does that show? Like I, one part, it shows that he's thinking about the matters, mm-hmm. but also that like he doesn't even need to make anyone else feel good or like make them see him in a good light. Yeah. Like somebody would talk to him, he would just not even respond. Exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. He didn't respond. Mm-hmm. I didn't notice it the first time because like you ignore some characters. There are 12 people in yeah, the world, I like know. you ignore them. But the second time you watch it, you actually notice the guy, mm-hmm. like he's on the spotlight for you. And you see, he's just standing by the window. Every exactly. two people come and talk to him, mm-hmm. uh, two of the most talkative ones. But he doesn't even respond to them, or like it just says one sentence, and then the other guy keeps on rambling again. Mm-hmm. And it just shows like that's the thing, like mystery or like <laughs> not right. talking so much. Uh, and I'm such a hypocrite saying <laughs> that. Like we have a podcast, yeah, we I talk know. for an hour, like seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one to talk <laughs> but yeah that's like how you should go about it like, I suppose mm-hmm. and, and you, you're so right that they don't put the spotlight on him like mm-hmm. he's a very famous actor yeah. so of course if you watch the movie you know he's the main character but if you didn't know this actor you actually have no idea who right. the main character is for the longest time because mm-hmm. even the movie starts with like the random the doorman this person the lawyer like some prisoner yeah and you're just like who am i supposed to follow and then it goes through the 12 jurors one of them is yawning one of them is looking at the phone and not this guy our main character is just one of the guys and yeah. he, he doesn't even do anything with his face to be noticeable and his face is not even in on the camera yeah even yeah, yeah you exactly knew, like the actor and that he was famous and you knew him and loved him and all right. that, you wouldn't even recognize him because his face is not in the introductory scene. Exactly. It's just the profile. And he's not even placed somewhere that is more noticeable. Like he's ah. just on the lower level, almost out of focus. Yeah. Other people are in focus. Exactly. That's so amazing. And what else I liked was that already you've come to the room and it's hot. Mm. So everything is like really... <laughs> It's just so sweaty. You actually feel it. 
and it's like everything is so compact mm. you feel uh, claustrophobic yeah they, they lock the door on them too yeah. <laughs> they, those are all stakes like okay ha- they're not gonna be able to get out of this room unless they break the lock or unless like one of them gets up and says what's I the reason leave. for that yeah, is that what how the they hell is that yeah i don't know why or maybe like if somebody like kills someone in the house, <laughs> like, which they were about to <laughs> exactly the exactly oh, mm. it it had some climaxes even though they're in just the room mm. and there's like tables they're, they're just sitting mm-hmm. they had some climax you know with the knife on the table and everything mm-hmm. so already the room is so hot and you feel like you are in the room you are one of the jurors you're there with them Mm -hmm. and you are also voting. And you don't get to know or understand the case unless it's from the characters. So when Mm -hmm. they're talking about it, you get to know the full extent of everything. You get to know the evidences, which is, first of all, there's a man downstairs, there was a man man downstairs, a Mm -hmm. neighbor, that heard the young boy say, I'm gonna kill you. Mm -hmm. And then what else? That he sees the boy run down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Which is like, they discuss that. How is that possible? The old man can't even walk really fast or Mm -hmm. properly. How could he go from his bedroom, walk to the hall, and then go open the door and see the boy come running down the stairs? Still, they were so smart to figure this out. Because if you just hear, a man heard, I'm going to kill you, and then saw the boy Boy, running out, you would immediately believe that. It's a no-brainer. Exactly. And then the other evidence is, another woman from the uh, window of a room really close by, saw the murder happen through a passing Which train. Which is so stupid. Like, how? what are the odds? Yeah, exactly. If there was, like, two evidences of that, and it's, like, at night, so it's, like, 12, 12 10. 12 a.m., yeah, yeah. And then what are the odds that the old neighbor downstairs heard that at the same time that the woman across the street decides to look out yeah like just have you a ever second try to look out your window there's so many things going on like you look for a second and then you go back to your life yeah what are the odds that you end up looking out the window when something is actually happening yeah and then you see like the person how would you even recognize that's like the person mm-hmm. i mean i'm a nosy person neighbor but even I, like, yeah, I wouldn't so recognize crazy. it. It's so crazy. You can't recognize. Like, <laughs> even um, there's sometimes, you know how you just look into a window and the yeah. person is naked? <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? Never happened okay. to me. <laughs> this happened oh to me a few God. times. And, and you're just like, you whoa. Traumatized? No, not or even. Or just, just really, oh. damn, this is nice. But when you're looking at that and you're just like, whoa, I'm not supposed to see this. Mm. But still, it's not like you remember anything from the person's face or even what they were doing. You're just kind right. of like, you see that and you're okay. And you look away. Right. You can never actually understand what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're a creepo, like watching for <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> or you had those goggles. <laughs> the binoculars, like, which yeah. you have. <laughs> which I do have. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Or, that is good. Like <laughs> crime happened in your neighborhood. Mm. They know who to look for. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I never look out the window. So that's why uh, the other thing is, like, yeah. this woman is so unbelievable. But when you just hear it, oh, yeah, the woman saw out the window, yeah. you're going to believe it immediately. Exactly. There, are, These are two evidences. And then and the, the third knife, evidence. Yeah, that's the crazy. The knife that is, like, and the fact that the boy did go to the movies but didn't remember. Yeah, how, how, how did that ha- happen to you? That happens to me all the time. Really? Like you don't remember? I, yeah, anything? I don't even remember what I watched like two days ago. Damn. Or three days ago. Did you watch something? I'm sure, <laughs> you know, like you're just at home, especially if you think about YouTube videos, like I don't know what I watched. Oh, I watched millions. hell no. Oh right? my God, yeah. But, and so Theater. I feel like movies at that time yeah. were like YouTube videos because there was no YouTube. So people, people are go just go every off, night. Yeah, yeah and mm. did you hear? They would always play two movies. So you get ticket for one, but really? they would play two. Oh, that's so good. That's so good, but also like so much stimulus. I know, I know, that's mm-hmm. true. So and there's that, but exactly, you hear these things, like he bought the knife that night, the store owner saw him buy the knife, and then Sorry. the dad gets killed by the same knife. Mm. So you're like, clearly sure, you did it, yeah. surely. Yeah, uh, all this evidence points to him. Which is like, I was still not convinced about the knife thingy. Mm -hmm. Like, how did it even happen? Did somebody see him buy the exact knife and then went and bought the same thing? Right. Or like, did it really fall from the boy's pocket Mm -hmm. and somebody that went to kill the father of that boy found the knife at the last minute and then Mm -hmm. put it in his... 
I feel like they were suggesting those types of knives are sold really a lot yeah. in the slums. Like there, it's just like a pattern that everyone buys. Mm-hmm. Which is which brought brings us to the most climactic <laughs> part of the movie, uh-huh. which everybody was so shocked to see. You know when Which the guy is like <gasps> just putting the knife oh, yeah, down on the table. Oh yeah, that was crazy. That was like I the was f- end of Act One or something. You're like, whoa, what? tables have turned. What happened? Everybody's also so shocked. And I heard some people say that they watched it in their teenage years, and they were so shocked at that moment. Like mm-hmm. and they watched it in a classroom, and everybody was just. <laughs> What Everyone starts clapping, whistling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they sure. love that movie. But no, exactly. Like, you see that and you're like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, now actually this movie can go somewhere. Right. And you know, the thing is, because they're arguing back and forth a lot, mm. you are so engaged the yeah, whole right. time. Like, for me, I watched a lot of movies that day when I mm. wanted to watch 12 Angry mm. Man. And I was like, oh, man, another movie, too? Like, I, there was too many movies that I had watched. Mm-hmm. I was so overstimulated. Exactly. But then I started playing it, and, oh, I was so hooked. Like, mm. I was along these people saying my opinions. No, yeah, he's exactly. not guilty. Why don't you listen to him? Why don't you listen? Or, like, try to defend your ideas. Why do you, like say it's a reasonable doubt or just that you're not even sure yourself like mm-hmm. you've got to be sure he's not guilty mm-hmm. it's just you keep yelling and you're like you are in the room with them exactly and it's arguments so it's always what's perfect is that it's a real-time movie so mm-hmm. it's like a, almost like a podcast that you listen to yeah it's supposed to be an hour and a half that they're in the room the movie is an hour and a half so you really feel like you're hearing real life conversation. Mm-hmm. And like you say, like you're always saying, oh, that was a good point. Oh, that was a really bad point. Yes. And you feel really in the moment. Another moment that was so intense for me is yeah. the, the prejudiced guy. He, he and two other people are the only ones left who haven't voted not guilty. Yes. And he starts saying, what are you guys talking about? He's a loser. This man deserves to die. And as he's talking, people one by one get up from the table. I know. No, it actually, uh, to me, was more symbolic mm. than, like, something that actually would happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was super it symbolic. It was so symbolic because the camera was, imagine it was here. And right. then everybody just started to sit, like, towards it. Actually, the guy was just rambling yeah, right exactly. here. Imagine, like, you were saying everything. And I'm, like, looking this way, like, out the window or somewhere. Yeah, I know. And I'm not looking at you at all. It so like it was like he kept losing his audience. And people were like, we're not going to listen to you. Yeah. You have no power. Mm -hmm. You can keep shouting, but it means nothing. And so it was so moving. Like, this guy who's been an asshole the whole movie, more than anyone else, he's always interrupting people. Like, literally, people are giving the best argument, and he starts coughing in the middle or, like, wiping his nose. Remember? I was like, this is so well made. Like, it's that's realistic. Mm -hmm. Imagine you you say something, you start saying something. (coughs) The boy's not guilty at all. (coughs) You must listen to me. There's a reasonable (coughs) doubt. (coughs) This is what that guy was doing, and I was like... Shut the hell up! Like let other Go people to talk. Go the washroom or something. I Man, know. what are you but, doing? But but it was like he was doing it on purpose just to like be Damn. rude. Damn. So My so. Pen <laughs> that was <laughs> intense. I wonder how it's gonna sound. I was so mad at you. At yeah, I know, point. I know. <laughs> like shut the hell up. Exactly. <laughs> and so this guy, like everyone's against him. No one likes him. Even he keeps wiping his nose the whole movie. Oh, they all do. They all Their do. Their handkerchiefs and everything. Yeah, I know. I just hope they don't give it to a lady or a damsel or oh. something. Yeah. Please uh, uh, imagine like you're crying and the guy is mm. like, here, my handkerchief, wipe your tears. That's with it. definitely what part two fuck? of the movie. Yeah, never take you a get man's some handkerchief. Red eye or something. Yeah. <laughs> After that. So yeah. this guy, like, we hate him so much. Right. But when people keep leaving, mm. and then somebody says to him, just be, never open your mouth again. Remember, the other guy says that to him. And y- and then he goes and sits alone at a table. Oh. Like, didn't you actually feel sad for him? Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, this guy's old. Like, he made a mistake. Let's forgive him. Even though he's been such an asshole the mm-hmm. whole movie. Exactly. They make every character like likable. And not, if not likable, at least understandable. Yes. No one is the villain. I know. Would you agree? Yes. Like even people were like shouting, being so bigotry. You could Stupid. be that because like we also argue a lot and it's just a whole thing. You know, people argue all the time. Mm. Uh, you know, we have our opinions, different things. We argue on the podcast and all of that. And then you sometimes you feel like it's your life depends on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have <laughs> to defend your belief or else like you would lose and mm. you would look bad. 
Exactly. So you would do anything. And then once you are actually, you see that you are losing and the person, the other person knows you're losing. It's like you don't feel at that point really happy for the victory that you got you know, right. over the uh, mm-hmm. argument that you won. And the person that lost doesn't feel good either. Mm-hmm. So one thing that Robert Greene said is that never get into an argument, actually. Mm-hmm. Never argue with anyone because it's just so fruitless. Nobody is going to change their opinion. I know that they did in this movie really fast, but people usually do not change their opinions. Like, it's so hard for them to do that, especially, like, these conservative people that had this prejudiced ideas. Like, it's really hard for them. Mm -hmm. So people don't do that. So what's the point in arguing? You're just going to... um, offend the other person Hmm. and you're not gonna just get anything in return so don't criticize don't argue with anyone and that's like if you were to convince them then you would use a different tactic like Mm -hmm. let's say agreeing with them first and explaining what's wrong about it but yeah exactly argument will never work like i used to think if you win an argument like oh you're stupid and i'm smart then you'll feel so validated and good i know but it means Actually? nothing yeah it's like you create an enemy first of all mm-hmm. and you you just see in as you said like in their face that they're hurt and you're like oh okay i don't feel that good now exactly i thought i would but exactly i feel like the most powerful that you feel is when your opponent is also powerful when they're not as powerful you mm. also feel bad I really love each person having their own argument style. Mm-hmm. So there would be one person who is really fact based. Yes. You know, I'm That'd not even going to hear. Yeah, I'm, I have no emotional connection to this. I don't care if he was beat up. I don't care anything. Like, th- these are the three facts. There would be another person who uses their word, like angry words to bully other people into uh-huh. listening. You guys must be stupid if you don't follow what I say. What, what are you out of your minds? Or another person would be like, really apologetic even to speak you know in number 11 i think oh. he he's like pardon me after everything he says uh, yeah, yeah. and very calm like i have prepared a paper and he <laughs> goes over the things that he's written mm-hmm. or or another person the the advertising guy who is like f- he has no ideas of his own like every time he wants to speak he just puts his glasses on and he says <laughs> so some cliche handsome one. exactly which is so interesting like i found him really handsome too at the beginning and then you kind of see like he, he has nothing dumb. going on exactly yeah. and then you definitely lose all the interest <laughs> yeah well probably you do i still like them wow <laughs> <laughs> exactly like and he's like an advertising is kind of related to what oh we do oh my god so like, give me your tips in marketing and all that. <laughs> yeah, clearly he had no tips he's drawing a <laughs> cereal box in that meeting Absolutely. but but i love like the, their different styles is great and the old man mm-hmm. who doesn't even talk like he's so kind he's like i'm sorry for wasting time in the bathroom and everything but actually he's the one who's looking at each person and understanding their psychology Ooh. you know remember the old man the is like one beside number eight exactly number nine yeah <laughs> number nine yeah. <laughs> he's like that that guy was the old man was lying because he wanted attention the woman wanted yeah. to look young you like do your uh, glasses hurt your nose you know like he was so people he, oriented. how he was talking you know he took his pauses and his silences you know mm-hmm. he took his time exactly just saying like oh you have these things over here like you do th- why do you do this because mm-hmm. mm, i have glasses like something like that yeah i mean what the other guy is saying you know why don't you stop asking about me yeah. you're wasting my time and he still he goes on. on yeah he takes his time like doesn't mm-hmm. care at all and then keeps on going that woman had this why do you think that is or like is there anything that could cause this other than glasses mm-hmm. and he's like no i don't think so and you see in his face oh the acting is so good i know slowly gradually the realization comes to the guy the reasonable guy Mm -hmm. that is so factual the reasonable guy also looks exactly like a guy from love is blind this tv show oh my god Uh, and apparently this guy oh i don't know the one that is like um megan fox's (laughs) megan fox um double gangers love interest oh something? my god i okay i don't know that much detail about it but i know <laughs> that he, this guy i i don't even watch the tv show <laughs> it's just so it's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere it's everywhere yeah apparently that guy was scandalous because he was <laughs> lying to everyone he was saying the same things to all of them like oh i want to take you out of the show let me ask your father for your hand what he would lie to multiple people That's like that so old-fashioned i know 
I want to ask your father for your hand. Yeah, <laughs> that's true too, exactly. <laughs> but but like the fact that he was lying, that's the thing. Mm. Uh, like he was saying it to multiple people. Like he was like, I don't feel this way about anybody else but you. But he was saying that to three people. And then he actually quit the show, I think, because they found out about his Damn. voice. But anyway, he looks exactly like the, <laughs> the guy who is like super... Probably his son or something. I know! <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Like, the guy from Love is Blind, yeah. he, he was somehow related to this actor. What? No, ma- that's what oh, I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. And like, he wasn't famous enough. So he's like, mm. if I go on a docu... In this show, everyone will recognize that I look like that guy. <laughs> and then everyone will love me. <laughs> I think that was Maybe, his plan. but his character was so unlikable. Exactly. And the crazy thing is his character on Love is Blind is exactly like that too. Like super fact-based, oh. no emotions. Damn. He's like judging everyone, like, oh, you're beneath me. So I literally think this guy watched 12 Angry Men and based his <laughs> life around that character. Yeah, his whole character, personality based on this guy. Mm-hmm. I don't have any thoughts of my own. <laughs> exactly. But well, there, there's those but guys, I yeah. should find the photo of that guy. Okay, maybe I'll yeah. send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So we had this guy that mm-hmm. got his facts checked and he said not guilty. Mm-hmm. And then the other man at the end oh, had yeah, a breakdown. Oh yeah, number three. Wow. This man was so upset, like he was the most angry out of all of them. And we get to see it like early on, he has some personal... Um, a vendetta. Yeah, exactly. A personal kind of, as you like a vengeance mm-hmm. against this boy. He sees his own son mm-hmm. in that. And uh, it's just that as I said, like it's prejudice that he has that is so personal. So he fights for his life over mm. there. And we see it in his breakdown too, as he's like trying mm. to, uh, all the facts have been said, everything has been said and, and uh, all the evidence have been proven to be, you know, there's room for doubt there mm-hmm. for the evidences. So he's trying for his life to say, but he's rambling. Mm. He's just rambling, he doesn't know what he's, saying how to like defend that yes this boy is actually guilty exactly yeah he's <laughs> going over the exact same arguments that everyone went over and already yeah. decided it was wrong yeah he's still repeating the same thing like as you say he's just rambling exactly and then he gets his wallet out mm. and the picture of his boy and he tries to tear it apart and then he's and imagine the table. that's so sad because his son left him mm. without a goodbye even his son just walked out and for two years he hasn't heard of his son and why do you think that is yeah probably he was an asshole exactly of course yeah but i mean even if he was like still to your parents you should s- call sometimes i don't know i mean if we're should talking explain. about the 50s parents mm. it's kind of different from this ours is true. like you know belt and Everything. I know. <laughs> yeah, I think they did use belts um, on their children. Oh, yes. For as sure, a for teaching sure. method. For sure. You know, most people back then were like mentally disabled just because of the amount <laughs> of abuse they got, you know? Literally. It was so bad. But at the same time, everyone on that, around that table is talking like, remember that guy was beat up? Like mm. the, the guilty guy. Yeah. And they talk it as if like that's a really big deal that he was beat up. So maybe mm-hmm. they weren't beat up. Oh. I don't know. Maybe. Definitely. Parents in Iran take the belt out yeah. on children who are not even mentally developed <laughs> to make decisions. They're like, let me That's teach so you stupid. by the number. It's so scary. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so bad. Like, OK, I, I used to get beat up, too, but not with a belt. And I remember like going to oh school God. and telling my friends, like, oh, my mom beat me like this. And they'll be like, oh, that's nothing. My mom brought the vacuum, uh, vacuum? cleaner yeah, head the and was like hitting like, me like this. Oh, that's so bad. So I, I have experience mm. with a belt once, <gasps> and it's so traumatizing. Oh I God. still remember, like I'm so scared of belt that mm. every time I put on a belt, I'm like, what? Oh, exactly. The things I could do with it. <laughs> For real, it's so heavy. <laughs> I know. Just like, smash. My mm. dad's belt. Oh God. Oh God, your dad beat you? <laughs> <laughs> it was just once. Uh-huh. I was so lucky. I I hear their stories. Yeah, I know. And it's so bad, but still, like I remember it, even though I was so. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, what? What is the reason? The it's kid, so shocking. The kid yeah. is not even conscious. They don't even know the decisions they're making. Mm-hmm. What is the point of doing that? Like, I think it's just about power. Yes. They, yes. You you have power over this child, and I they're know. not listening to you. And you're like, I can literally kill you. So they do. 
like hurt yeah. because I remember I had a younger brother and he was so annoying like <laughs> I love him a lot but he was like so frustrating like he would never let me hang out with friends wow. he's always swearing at me he's literally like punching me oh, I, God, I was yes, so annoyed yes. and and so I would be like I can literally fucking choke you like I could so I would beat him and this lasted for like five six years until he got older and now like then he could beat me as well oh so my. our fights became like much m- less oh, so frequent destructive. oh yeah because like he could beat me now so i'm not gonna beat exactly, him exactly exactly the same thing right now we don't have any fights because i know i, I can't <laughs> yeah for you know, i would fold like mm-hmm. a paper mm-hmm. uh, and the thing is let's hope that these kids uh, don't watch these episodes one, once we get famous and rich mm-hmm. and try to sue us, you know, for those the, things the that The children you claim. or the brothers? The brothers. Oh, yeah. yeah. They definitely will. One, I, my brother <laughs> claims that one time I kicked him off the sofa and he went unconscious. <laughs> I don't think what? that's true. <laughs> okay. Oh. He broke my glasses. He grabbed my glasses from my face and broke <gasps> them. And I just kicked him off the sofa for doing that. Whoa. And he so says he went unconscious. So. Super right foot. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, okay. But b- I was also a child. So yeah, but if me. anything, for me, I would sue my brother. He beat mm. me so bad he would go to karate classes as a child, <laughs> and I was his boxing man. <laughs> no. Like I was just there as like an object, so he <laughs> would beat me up to oh practice. Oh my god! What, what would hell? you do about it? I couldn't. I would beat him up once I was like my anger's built up, but I was a very patient child. Mm. No, that's not true. I had the worst anger issues ever. <laughs> yeah, I had to control it. But you could beat him even though oh, he went yeah. to karate and you chose oh. not to? I couldn't really. He was little and so fast. You I know. know. And they could get anywhere. And I, I was <laughs> awkward and I didn't know karate. These little brothers are such menaces, don't you think? Yeah. My brother, he would turn his hands into fists and just start to turn around. <laughs> like he doesn't even look around. He just hits anything that's in his way. <laughs> and he would keep running into a wall and his nose would bleed. And he would say, oh, Moral did this to me. Oh, yes. Yes, they do that. What the fuck? They always stage. But I could never do yeah. this. I could never lie about this to my mm. parents. Like, I couldn't pull it off. But he would do that so easily. Mm. Oh, my gosh. So, I think we agree with number three. That kids are a menace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that they should exactly. be, like, they should they go should under be. the... Killed. Belt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. They should they go should under the belt situation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we agree with that. Okay. Jerry. <laughs> Judge has decided. <laughs> so this guy is okay. breaking down over there. Mm. And it was such an emotional part of the mm. movie and scene for me. And you see, like, he doesn't even... Oh, the point that he says, not guilty, but his face is not even up. Like, yeah, he's right. on the table. Ah, that's so emotional. That's great because he first has to rip his own child. Yeah. He has to realize this is a different child. You know, I hate my son because he's not talking or to me. Or that he forgave his son as well you think because he yeah. ripped the paper though i know he did but like after that he had the breakdown and like said mm. not guilty so it's so like at that point he gave up he realized yeah, he's like oh this is just a kid what am i doing right yes exactly but we see like his opinion about his son very early on right like mm-hmm. he just sits down like i think it's one of the introductory scenes that we see just all the characters mm-hmm. he sits down and talks to another guy and he says that and he says that one more time, I think. But yeah, he, he like, keeps saying, like, these children are so lousy. They, they are good for nothing. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. exactly. So we see that happening. And on top of these people, there are some people in the group that did not really have their own opinions. They right. were just influenced by other people. And I'm glad that happened. But when I was watching it, I didn't like that because I was like, why don't they also have some argument, you know? Because mm. the arguments were so fun to listen to everybody's different perspective Mm -hmm. but some people were just they didn't know what to say but that makes so much sense because there's always in a group there's always people that are shadows or what do they say like gray people gray Mm -hmm. people that that are neutral have no opinion they're just swayed by the by the crowd Mm -hmm. the majority and that was the case here we had two i think i remember Mm -hmm. that did not really know what exactly like one of them said i don't even have any comments can i pass and let the other person talk? yes that guy that guy so either they were hiding their opinions like they, ju- they just thought nobody's the one li- gonna want to listen to this yeah i don't know how to phrase it well uh-huh so let me pass or yeah they straight up like 
were super neutral about mm-hmm. it. And I think they were the ones that once the majority was like not guilty, they also agreed as well. That's right. Yeah. I think at that point they changed their vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one was the baseball guy who didn't even have a reason. And you know, yeah, from the beginning he didn't. For guilty he didn't have a reason. For well, not guilty, yeah, you know, we just I want to get out of here. Exactly, and with his hat and everything, mm-hmm. he was just sitting there. And uh, this guy, the number nine, sitting beside the old man, sitting beside the main character, was like. Uh, he actually got really angry. I think he was the one that got angry and said that, why don't you have, like, if you want to say not guilty even, you have to have your reason. Don't just say it blindly mm. just so you could go to your baseball game. It's about, like, a life and it's about mm. But he's just, he's not even affected by that speech. Exactly. And, yeah, he's the guy who's not affected at all. I was going to say number 12 is the same, uh-huh. but number 12 keeps changing his mind, like, in an yes. intense way. Which is where he says not guilty, and then the next scene he's like, okay, I changed my mind, he is guilty. <laughs> and you're like, what the hell? Like, stand for something. Man, that is a PR person, you know, <laughs> a marketing man. Right, right. They know what's up. Exactly, just crap. go for the side that is favorite. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at least, like, he's listening and he's making his mm-hmm. mind up. Literally, the baseball guy could not care at all. Like, and he yes. sells marmalade for a living. He's like, I, I, I'm going to go sell my jam. Like, this is not my thing, you know? Yeah. Why would you not, like, care at all what's going on? It's crazy. Exactly. Which brings us to this fact, capital punishment. Mm -hmm. Should there be people that actually decide for other people's lives? Should they, like, have this power and control? Like, even the first minute the movie started, I was like, okay, you know, this little boy, let's say he even killed his dad. Why are we talking about killing him? What's What would that gain us? Like, mm-hmm. at least put him in prison for 20 years. Well, why would you, like, take his life away? What what, yes. what good will that do? Exactly. And actually, that was, like, a controversial opinion. Like, capital punishment, they're still studying. Like, what is the effect of capital punishment? Mm. Does it actually correlate to the um, murder Bringing rate? down. Or, yeah. Yes, exactly. Which, I think they did so many studies. Like, if you, like, study social sciences, there's so many researches about mm. that. Like, for each death or murder like uh, sorry execution there were like eight or nine only murders or something like it kind of decreased it okay but still like in other parts of the world that's different and in some parts of the world there's like they have so much worse punishments for people that is so bad like it's for robbery for example they would just cut oh your yeah fingers what the or fuck something. yeah or like some really fatal parts of your body like in uh, mm-hmm. for example china or uh, middle east they have some really extreme ways of uh, punishment and capital punishment is so easy actually in middle east like they don't mm-hmm. care they just execute anybody that doesn't uh, that disagrees with them right and their opinions like it's like drinking water for them every morning they just kill someone mm-hmm. just like that for example imagine you tweeted something and the next day they yeah, arrest you yeah i know Exactly. Yeah. And they have another rule that if you hurt someone in a way, yeah. then they have the right to hurt you back in the same way. Like, let's say I cut your leg off. Yeah. Now you can go to the police and say, cut that girl's leg off. Oh, yeah. An eye for her. an eye and everything mm. like that. <laughs> super well, do you weird. think that should be the case? No, I don't think so. Like, okay, it's super clear that you shouldn't kill another yeah. person. Why would you take away someone else's life? Life, the life that you didn't give to them. Right, right. How can you have, like, the control to take it? Exactly. Like, even if they are a murderer, yeah. you're doing the same thing that they were doing yes. by murdering them. So I think clearly mm. capital capital punishment means death, right? Or does it mean, like, Executing. all Executing. Okay, Capital punishment off the table. Like, that should not be happening. But what do you think about prison? Like, are you, do you think a person is allowed to take somebody else and put them into a room for 20 years? Like, just lock them up if they think that this person is a menace to society? (laughs) The thing (laughs) is, like, I I would say yes, because I am a part of the society. I want it to be safe. Mm. But, like, take it like that. We are free humans that came to this world, we are allowed to do anything that we want. Mm -hmm. And we just created this artificial society and government, uh, which tells us like has a set of rules. And if we break them, they are allowed to take anything they want. Like, right. That it does feel so weird. Like who gives us the right to just destroy this person's life 
yeah. and take away yours. Especially for things that are much smaller. Like imagine they would be like, oh, if, okay, if you smoke weed, if we catch you with some weed, you're going to be in prison for six years. Like these random things that they used to actually have. Whoa, really? Yeah, like crazy things. Like, or, or if you would steal a car, you would be in here for six years. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, why did this person steal a car? Probably because like their life is so bad that they need a crazy amount of money like yeah. immediately. But but then you you think like if prison systems were better <laughs> in a way that like, like Norway and Europe yeah right Norway. right like that that you take these people and actually like train them to think better right that would be cool exactly like there's a gym there there's like good food there's and like somebody uh, like teachers that actually yes work on their mind mm-hmm. even though these people would rebel but like imagine having them in this place for an extensive amount of time even though that is also inhumane though it is like inhumane you're also yeah influencing their mind yeah that's true like you are brainwashing them again but mm-hmm. like if it is in a positive way maybe that's good prisons are probably not like this like what i picture in my head is that it's just a room like there's a toilet in there yeah and you're stuck here and you ha- you have to go out at a certain time to like run around and then eat this mush food mm. and like I don't know so socialize with someone and then go back into your cell yeah. so it's not like they're actually improving in there but I guess they're getting a lot of time to think like just be on their but own that's and also think. bad like imagine they thought for years and years they're in their mind and then they come back and they're like suicidal they're also yeah, I know. much more crazy and menace again to the society because they were in their mind all this time exactly and imagine like that's not even gonna help them because Anytime somebody punished anyone, that doesn't really change. I know, I know, mm. there's like in psychology, they say, yes, if you punish someone, they won't do that thing. Like right. They did it for dogs and everything, and for humans it works. But really what works really good, like better than anything and is so effective, is positive reinforcement. Mm. So if you give something positive each time they do something good, that's so much better mm-hmm. than uh, negative reinforcement, which is like... If you exactly. do something bad, I will like take. Over. Then you just fear that, yeah. so you're like, yeah. I won't do it because they'll catch me. I know it's so crazy. Like even 50 years ago, mm-hmm. people would rob anything. Like if you had, for example, imagine a farm and you had like 50 goats on that. Like people would all come and rob this at night once you mm-hmm. were like moving, even like in daylight. Everybody was robbers. Like. They were so poor, most mm. of the majority of people were so poor. They would rob all the time. And we saw it even like movies like Killers of the Flower Moon. And I heard it from my grandparents. Like mm-hmm. they were always robbed all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. And the rich people were much more likely to be robbed. So I think we Yeah, how do you do positive re- right, but right now with the prisons and everything. <laughs> That's true. But I'm wondering, like, how could you do positive reinforcement so that people don't rob? Mm. Maybe by giving them tax money so they don't need <laughs> that much money to I don't know. go rob. Uh, I guess so. Like what Canada does right now, for example, welfare or mm. something that they give to people. Um, enough to meet their basic needs, not go and do anything against like other people or like robber and like they don't need that exactly they would give them enough money to like pay enough bills for clothing and food and everything and also a place to stay mm-hmm. so that that helps really exactly. that helps. because robbing is like a state of mind that you could fall into easily yes like and you know it's like exactly as you say a state of mind so once you get over that guilt mm. and that emotion you can do it all the time mm-hmm. like I remember this episode of the family guy <laughs> that Lewis was uh, just started to rob something from a retail store and then she kept doing that like an addiction oh, she right, didn't right. need that but she kept doing this because it gets to be an addiction mm-hmm. so but yeah you know, this is what I was thinking recently like mm. governments do actually an amazing job of regulating society mm. like okay maybe they're not perfect but you just imagine everything that's built yeah was built by man you know like we don't live in the jungle you it's so amazing like if you look there's streets there's lights so that it's yes. not dark at night and there's signs that explain how you should drive so you don't hurt other people i know and they thought about it they like, did all the streets and everything like the whole map 
and it's all the same design. It's not like each person did something different. Like they came up with a plan that's the same throughout the whole country. Mostly like America, I would say, because it's a new world and they really thought about it. But like if you take Europe, Asia and Africa, they are just, you know, yeah, so much more messy. Exactly. So messy. So messy. But America is incredible. Like imagine all the brilliant minds of the world came to this country Mm. and they built it from new. Like they had their experience from their own countries and they came here with that experience. They made this Mm -hmm. like the best. America is the best thing in the world. Even if people (laughs) don't realize it, even if Americans and Canadians don't realize that Mm. it's it's so rare. It's so rare. Mm -hmm. We have to appreciate it. I feel like this is such an amazing movie. If you Mm -hmm. watched it. Please comment down below what you think about mm-hmm. this movie. Uh, do you agree with capital punishment? Should people have this sort of power over someone else's life? Mm-hmm. And what do you think of this movie in general? The director, the writer, and the characters and the plot. And also, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. What are you doing? <gasps> yes. What are you? One I'm hour and a so half. So angry at you. I'll come there. Twelve. To your home. We'll be angry. Yeah. <laughs> Make you watch this one. Go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And tell us, do you agree with number eight or should this guy have been murdered? Like, should should he have number been eight? <laughs> do, do you agree with Henry Fonda or, or do you think that the, the this fellow, this like 12 year old should have actually gone under capital punishment? And let us know what do you think about the way these people are talking to each other? Like, is it relatable as a, if you're a man? Let us know. If, if you actually are that angry when you speak to other people. <laughs> and, and in general, also let us know what you think about the story, what really stuck mm-hmm. with you and the first time you watched it or the second time. Yeah. And if you have recommendations of films similar, definitely let us know because I love this one and exactly. I want to see more films like it. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our channel below and watch other videos that we have right around here. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for watching this episode. Thank Thank you. Thank you. See you on the next one.